Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm going to do my wig clean update for March 3rd, <laughs> 2024. So Cooper is here with me. He is unable to stay away. Anyway, <laughs> um, so this week, um, just a quick update on house stuff. Um, we got the plumber came out on Thursday and all the plumbing part has been replaced now that um, we just had that all done. So um, that part is done. Um, the contractor from the company that was doing the demo and then we'll do the reconstruction on the garage kind of blew me off a couple of days. And then finally they showed up on Tuesday. Cause again, last week I said on Friday that or the Friday that he was supposed to show up, didn't show up Monday. I called him and he, I was on their schedule, but he didn't call or again, another call, no show. I was not happy when I called third Tuesday and they said they were going to come out that day. And I had to make them come out when my brother got home because I wasn't, cause again, I, we had no plan for them to be there. So they came out and they put, uh, that night, um, I actually got home in time, um, and they put in dehumidifiers and some fans in both of our garages. So I lost my garage. I'm not happy since it's still winter. Um, I mean, it's just rain, but still not happy. Uh, so then, um, so, so they've been running 24 seven since, uh, Tuesday, um, a Tuesday night, I think. And, uh, oh, it's just a low thunder coming from my garage all the time. Um, I don't notice it all the time, but it just, you know, it just happens. But my problem is, is my microwave won't work because what, uh, what those, uh, both of the things are both on the same circuit as my microwave and the downstairs lights. So I've popped the breaker twice. Once the first time I tried to use the microwave and the second time we changed the, I thought we changed outlets enough that we moved the circuit, but it still does. I only got 30 seconds and I popped the breaker. So I can't use my microwave right now. And this could be weeks. So I'm going to have to figure out a different plugin to put the, um, one of the, um, at least one of the machines, I think. I don't know. Or else I'll have to just go over to my brother's house and use his microwave. Because his works just fine, even though his is plugged in exactly the same way mine is. I don't know. Anyway, not that's my little pet peeve of that. But we don't know when they're coming back to actually do the demo yet. I have not been given that date. They're um, supposed to have talked to the insurance about some of the extra stuff that they found while when they came and looked compared to, you know, what the insurance says. So... Cause again, it's a much bigger project than what I first was told it was going to be. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's escalating <laughs> anyway. So, but we're making progress anyway. So that's kind of my little update. So things are happening. Uh, Monday, our fence is going to uh, be rebuilt. So tomorrow I will stay here until they show up and then I get to go to work afterwards. Hopefully I'm hoping not to take the whole day. They're supposed to come between eight and nine and then um, we will, um, <sighs> Sorry, she's bugging me. Uh, so they're supposed to be here between eight and nine to start that. And they're supposed to take the two days, uh, um, Monday and Tuesday. So anyway, so then that'll be another thing I have to pay for the second half of um, that bill. Anyway, so we're, we're, we're getting as along as much as possible. Anyway, so that's the update. <laughs> There's nothing else really going on in my world. Uh, besides the house stuff, uh, just, I've been pretty laid back or trying to be laid back as much as I can. My, as I said, just as long as I'm trying not to stress about all this stuff any more than I need to. Anyway, so that's kind of it. Um, anyway, so that was a long opening. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so let's talk about, um, the books that I read because I did read quite a bit and then, um, we'll talk about the stuff I'm in the middle of, which I'm in the middle of a lot of things. And then, Kind of what I think I'm going to read in the next week. I do want to just briefly say I did try to read Jade City by Fonda Lee again and I have decided to DNF it at this time. For, there's just something about this that um, I cannot get myself into. I only made it 20 pages in this time. Last time I got about 60 pages and uh, I just I don't know what it is about this that I'm having trouble with, but I, I am having trouble. So I have decided to pull all three books off my shelf at this point. They're technically still on my TBR, but I'm not going to unhaul them just yet. I feel like I should give this one more shot, like, you know, at a time when I'm, when I really feel I'm ready for it. I just, 
I just kept trying to force this because it's so popular and I have all the books and I really want to get into it. I just, but I'm just not. I can't explain what my problem is. It's just that I don't want to pick this up and I don't want to listen to it. I didn't want to read it. I didn't, I tried all the things. I have all the forms of it or I got the audiobook from the library. So I didn't pay for that, but I paid for the book. I had already had the ebook at some point when it was on, you know, Kindle deal long time ago. Anyway, I just, the whole series is going to go into my uh, closet um, where I have uh, a lot of the ones that I built uh, last year and just, it's just going to hide in there for a little bit and then maybe in another year or so I will try one more time and then if I, it doesn't work again, then I'll just get rid of them. I don't know why I want to give so many chances to this book, but I do. So I'm going to give it one more chance, but just not right now. So um, on Sunday, after I filmed Sunday, I... um. Let's see if I can find everything. Oh no, where is it? Um, what did I do on this? Oh, I think it's her. So um, I read three um, uh, novella or short novellas, short stories um, for the end of the seventy-two hours in the reading nook. Um, I did. This isn't going to expand. Stupid. Anyway, I did the first. I did uh, three of the iron. Drood Chronicles. I wanted to continue and I had three novellas and short or, or short stories, however you want to look at them. They're pre all pretty short um, that I need to read. I read Two Ravens and One Crow by Kevin Hearn. Again, this one is um, it's, uh, on Goodreads, it's 4.3 um, in the series. So you read it after book four. Um, this one was really good, and I think it is very important to the whole story. This is not one you want to skip. Of the a lot of the short stories, you could probably just skip, but this one is one of the ones that you really should read because it does actually there. It's talked about in one of the further um, books. So I should explain. Anyway, so anyway, I really like two uh, ravens and one crow. Um, Atticus has to go on kind of this adventure with the Morgan. And it kind of uh, brings up a lot of things that we didn't know. And uh, then again, as I said, there are repercussions from this um, in other um, books. Because again, I read quite a bit of those this uh, week. Um, the other, um, that one was like 63 pages or something. Um, then I... These are not blown up very well. And then I read The Demon Barker of Wheat Street by, again, my Kevin Hearn. This is 4.4 .4 in the series. So this one um, is um, just, this is like 30 some pages. And this is more of a, just a little episode with um, um, Atticus and uh, Oberon and um, and um, Graniel. And they're, um, they go to this uh, carnival that's in um, this small town. And uh, it, things go wrong when there are some demons there. So that one was just, it was just, it was not, you know, you don't, it's not one of the, I would not, I don't say you have to read that one right then. I just, I just did because it was the next one. And then the last one I read that day was The Chapel um, Perilous, um, which is technically 4.5, they say in the series. So this one, um, I would I would read this one if you can find it. The problem is is that it's not easy to find. I think it's in one of the other bind ups of the short stories. Um, I might even own it, but I I found out I owned an older version of this um, that I must have bought online. Right now it's it's been pulled from Amazon and other places. I don't know if it's going to be revamped for something. Um, but it's just a, it's an interesting story about Atticus in the past when he was, you know, first a druid and like, you know, so really far in the past. And I really like this one. It has to do with, it's the search for the Holy Grail kind of, um, mythology and a, just a different take on certain things. It was, it was interesting. It wasn't, I think it wasn't my favorite. Of the, of the three, um, uh, my favorite was the two ravens and one crow. There's just so much in that, that. Um, has come like it has referenced things that have it talked about things from the first couple books and then it has things in the later books that reference back to it I just think that's a really important uh, novella to read um if you're reading the series if after book four I would definitely um continue on to that one I just the other ones are just for fun I don't think they're quite um I mean I like the chapel um perilous but it's not I didn't need to read it in that order it was not 
that important, but I think two ravens and one crow was, was important to the full story of the Iron um, Druid uh, Chronicles. So, okay, so I read those on Sunday for the rest of that readathon. Um, I did start then um, Vision in Silver. I started it this Sunday morning when it came in from Libby for a reread um, by audio. The audios are done by Alexander Harris um, and Bishop. And the other series, again, is one of my favorite series of all time. And I just adore rereading these. And I'm just doing it by audio this time to do something different. I think I like, um, I like both versions, but I mean, I think... I mean, I still love to reread these physically. So this time is just going to be a audiobook way. So um, this is book three in the series. So again, this is a uh, urban fantasy alternate history where much of the North America is ruled by the others who are shapeshifters, vampires, and elementals. And humans are allowed only certain tracts of land and certain ways to go from one place to another. All the other land is um, watched over by the others. And um, this is this, this series is following several, you know, several books of things going on after uh, Meg um, stumbles into one of the courtyards where the others uh, live close to the humans to kind of watch over what they are doing. And things just kind of expand from there. Um, this is just a, a, just a great series, I think, overall. Um, I just, I just adore it. And book three is, again, um, it was just a fun ride and I, I'm glad I got to this. So I'm on hold. I think there's somebody else who is reading these exactly as I am because every time I've, I'm, I'm always waiting for the next one because there's only one copy at my, on Libby and, um, I'm always waiting for the person to be done so that I can read it. And then every time I go to renew, to, um, ask for the next, the book after that, they've already got it. <laughs> so I think that we're just we're all, we're both just reading this in order. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to uh, getting to book four. As I said, I'm just going to continue my reread slowly as the books from Libby come in, just because they're fun. So I think that is the only reread. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Um, so then, um, after I finished Vision and Silver, I think this one I read on Tuesday was Midnight Ruin by Katie Robert. This is book six in the Dark Olympus series. So I, um, this just came out in January. So I'm caught up on this series. I'm really <laughs> excited that I'm finally back to being caught up on this series. I still have a couple of her books I need to read from other series, but I'm caught up on the Dark Olympus series. So the Dark Olympus series is, um, is a romance which are, you know, that is used, um, it uses, um, the Greek gods as titles of people who rule this city and, um, and their, and their internal fights. But now that there are, there's something else going on of somebody trying to, um, infiltrate the city because they are kind of isolated in a way by some kind of magic. And in this book, we're following, um, uh, how does she say her name? Eurycy? Ur Eurycy? I think that's how it said it. She, it's her romance with uh, Carrion, Carrion, and um, um, Orpheus. And um, is that right? Yeah. So it's an interesting, it's definitely one of the, you know, multi, you know, partner thing. And they have a lot of history because of things that happened earlier in the books. And, um, it was just a fun thing. It's not my favorite of the series. It, there's a lot of plot things in here that pushes the, the whole, the overarching, because this is a 10 books, going to be a 10 book series and this is book six. So a lot of things are moving, um, that are happening, but we, again, th th this couple is just not my favorite, but it was just, they were still good sexy times, you know, like that stuff was all good. Um, but the, the machinations that are happening, um, that are coming to the forefront of, uh, things that are happening in this city. I, it uh, actually really good. I really, um, I enjoyed this. And again, when we got to find out certain things in this book that we didn't know before, and I'm really excited to see where this goes. So, um, the series, so the next book doesn't come out till I think it's August. Um, dark, is it dark restraint? I'm not positive. Anyway, point is, is that is, I have one more book this year. Um, and I'm excited um, for that next book to come out. I do need to, guess I still have a couple more of her books I need to read um, that I'm behind on, but I'm, I'm caught up on the Dark Olympus series. So then, 
as I said, I read more of the Iron Jude series. I did read Trapped and Hunted. So this is book um, five. Um, and then this is book six. So um, I just got into a kick after reading those short novellas and sh short stories that I had to read before I picked up a book. Um, well, I wanted to pick, read them before book five. Um, and then I just, I picked these up. I did get the audiobooks from my library uh, for Libby. They're done by Luke Daniels. He does a great job on um, the audiobooks. I really uh, like the audiobooks for these. Um, but I just, I was in an audiobook mood this, this week. It was very quiet at work. We had a lot of stuff. I had stuff to do on my computer, but not, um, there's a hair that's bothering me. Sorry. Um, I didn't get it. <laughs> anyway, um, that it was so quiet that all the guys were out working again, you know, cause I work in a, you know, a maintenance shop and, um, they were all gone. So it was really quiet. So I would just listen to audiobooks while I was doing my work cause they weren't coming in and out of my, you know, out of the parts room. So anyway, I got a lot of audiobooks done. So trapped, um, again is book five. This is, um, this is actually, you know, is pushing. So this is, no, this so this is the middle of the series because I think there's ten books in this series. Yeah, there's ten books in the series and a lot of novellas. I still have quite a bit of novellas to read near the end, but um, this is uh, th there's just so much stuff happening there. I can't go into it because again, the first books were like the first three books were like an arc, and then the book four was kind of another bridge to I think another arc which is the next couple of books I just there's so much happens in here there's a lot of there is a lot of travel in here if you're not one for the travel trope where they're having to do stuff but I just enjoy these so much the characters I just love and the the, the relationships that grow between them and then it's just a lot of mythology so again let me go back these are urban fantasies I don't know if I said that earlier <laughs> these are urban fantasies uh, following mostly Atticus, who is a druid who is over, you know, is like 2000 years old. And he, um, is, um, he's always getting into trouble with other, other mythologies and other, other gods from other pantheons. And it's just, it's interesting how they all, this world is all interacts them because all these pantheons are still around because people believe in them. And so, but he, you know, again, he's one of the only druids. So um, the things that happen in these books is just, it's pushing the series forward. I'm really excited to continue on. I am probably going to take, I don't know, I might not be able to hold out all through March because April, I plan to get back to the series um, after, because I have so many things in March that I want to read. But it was just great this, this week to dive back into the Iron Druid series and read these two novels. And if I could have, I would have got another one, but I ran out of time. But I just, I really enjoyed these for different reasons. Certain things happened in here. Um, I mean, I almost cried in this one. It was really, a, <laughs> it was really close. Um, twice, like early in the book. Like, I don't, it was hard. I, it was, I was surprised, but I almost did. It was really close. It was, <laughs> but maybe because I was at work. It didn't. I didn't. Uh, I might have, you know, so we'll see. Anyway, the point is, is I'm going to continue on to book uh, seven, Shattered, probably, as I said, early April or end of March if I kind of break. I'm hoping not for a little bit because I did just read these. I don't want to binge the whole series. I, I mean, I still have four novels and a lot of novellas, um, but I'm really enjoying uh, reading this series that I've put off for years because I read the first book twice before and never could get myself to continue on, which makes no sense because it was re it's really urban fantasy of this kind that I really like. And I, I really am enjoying um, every these. So I'm hoping, as I said, I'm going to give it a, a hopefully a little time now that I've read so much of it uh, this week. I'm hoping um, that I'll take a break for a couple weeks and then I'll, I'll come back to it. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to read it. I definitely want to. And then the last book that I finished... Uh, this week was The Holy Terrors by Simon R. Green. Um, Simon R. Green, again, is one of my favorite authors, but he is also a hit and miss author. Certain series I just adore, and then other series I just don't care about. So this is kind of a middle of the road one for me. This is one of the ones I'm not, I would, the, this is the, the first book to a new series. I mean, I think they're going to call it The Holy Terrors. And uh, I'm, because I like the character, the main character. So main, well, yeah. Yeah, the main two characters really, but we're really following um, one character in this uh, overall. And then um, what happens is, <laughs> kitty. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, but so I really, I, I probably will continue on to the next book when it comes out, probably next year. 
whenever he gets around to it. Okay, you can stop. Anyway, he must be a bookmark in there that I don't remember. Um, so this one is following, um, oh, what is his name? See again. Alistair, who is a bishop uh, for the, I believe, of the Church of England. And he is asked to be on this Spooky Times. I think it's Spooky Times. It's something funny, ridiculous. Yeah, Spooky Time, which is one of those ghost hunting shows. And so the show is kind of losing ground. It's kind of like, it's, it's, uh, not had the best reception recently and so this is kind of their comeback as an overall special that they're going to do at this really haunted um town uh hall in this small little town and he is um asked to come you know <laughs> as a church represent had church representative kind of thing for the show to you know and he the you know, he's, he's pretty much there because he has, he just was told to be there. And then there's going to be, there's an actress who is in her early thirties. So she's kind of in that range where not all actresses after they've been the young, hot thing, you know, trans, trans, um, ah, uh, is able to, uh, continue their, how much uh, work they get. And so she's there to kind of boost her, um, image. Um, there's a comedian who is, had been on hard times. And he needs money. And then there is a a woman who um, won uh, an, a con, a cooking contest, and so she's trying to promote her her next uh, cook cookbook. And so they're there with two of the um, the hosts for or the host for the um, spooky time show, as who is also the producer, and then also um, the medium who is there to you know contact the ghost. So it's the six of them getting locked in this. Uh, town hall overnight and it's supposed to be a live special so there are cameras hidden in the walls and stuff to watch them and then they're supposed to be there all night and this did not go anywhere where I thought it was going to go because again I read a lot of Simon R. Green so I had a lot of ideas of what could happen and this actually didn't go the way I planned it to this one I think is going to be one of those ones where you might like it but I don't I just don't think anybody's going to love it because it it does it's not as fun as some of his other ones that I've read um, over the years, but I found it still interesting. I still wanted to know what happened. I was still a little surprised, not at the main conclusion. I think that was, I, I figured that part out, but some of the little details in it um, and how it went and what I, I don't want to give away um, how with the, all the things that happened. It was just, um, it was just, it wasn't what I expected because I have read some of his other series and he has a whole series called the ghost finders. I think it's the ghost finders that, um, you know, has to do, was, is kind of the same, like it has some of the same things, but it's totally different. Cause this again, is supposed to be reality TV and that is more people working for the government who actually deal with the supernatural. So it's not the same, but it meant like, because of that, I think I had certain ideas. Anyway, this was fine. Um, again, as I said, I will read the next one just because I'm interested enough um, to see how he would continue his series with this after what happens in here. Um, but it's not going to be a favorite and it's not one I think I'll have to own. Um, I'll have to get a copy of. Um, I just, it was weird. It was <laughs> just, it wasn't, wasn't what I expected, but I'm glad I read it. As I said, Simon R. Green, I always try to give his series a try. There's still a couple of them that I DNF'd um, kind of early after reading them that I kind of want to go back to, but then also I'm like, no, it's okay. <laughs> I have some I love and some I just don't. So anyway, so right now, what am I in the middle of? I have started my buddy read with Berna at Berna's Book is Adventures for the Secret Life of a Vampire by Carolyn Sparks. This is book, oh, I've lost track what number we're on. Uh, six, my book six. <laughs> in the Love It Steak series. So we uh, started this uh, sat on Saturday. So I am now, um, I, I got to just, just before filming, I was doing some, I had to do some chores first. And so I finished my reading for this morning. So I'm going to uh, message her after I film um, about that. So we are only two days in, so we still have three days. So we'll be done Wednesday. Um, this is just, and we're reading about 70 pages a day. So these are just fun paranormal romances with vampires and a few other things. And we're following Jack who, um, who <laughs> meets this, uh, police officer, Laura, and she, there's something about her that he is not able to manipulate her, her memories or anything. So she knows he's, there's something weird going on with him. 
And there's, um, they're also on now the hunt for somebody who is kidnapping uh, college students. And so they're going to be, it's like a mystery with that. So that'll be kind of fun. They're, they're, they're a cute couple so far. Like they're not together. <laughs> they're just, they're still battling the, what are you? What are you? And she he doesn't want to tell her. So, um, it's just, it was, it's really cute so far. I'm really enjoying this with Berna. And again, I said, we're, we're reading this series and it's just been fun. It's just a fun, uh, paranormal romance, uh, vampire novel, um, or series. So anyway, so we are working on that. Um, I am listening to the audiobook this time around by Jennifer Bradshaw. So anyway, that one's going well. So again, I said I'm two, uh, two fifths the way through that, 140 pages. Um, I did on Friday after I finished, uh, the Iron Druid, um, book that I had been working on, Hunted, I did switch, um, back to the Beekeeper's Apprentice because Monday, no, <laughs> Friday was the first day of March Mystery Madness. So I did start, um, this book and one other. So this one, uh, I came back to this one. So I had been 90 pages in when I put this down in January because I wasn't sure I wanted to continue because it did a thing that I hate about um, any kind of book that has an older protagonist looking back um, at their past and telling the story. And they do that thing like, well, if I had known or if I knew that this would do this way, you know, like that whole, I don't like that um, framing technique in, in, in novels. I have never liked it. And more and more, the older I get, the more I hate it. Because I, I just feel like the author is thinking I'm dumb. And that I'm not going to catch things um, that they have to point out that, you know, if they'd done it differently, things would have gone, gone differently. Well, duh. You know, like, it just, that is one of my biggest pet peeves of all writing bookish things. Like, that is the the number one problem I have. Um, and it did that right at page 90. And so I wasn't sure. But I got the audiobook um, off of Libby. Oh, and that is done by Jenny Sterling. Sterling? Sterling? I don't know. Anyway, so uh, it's pretty good. So I uh, listened to that afternoon at work. I got quite a few. Uh, how I had, I had quite a bit of time that day, as I said. And I got to, so I'm almost done. I'm at the last section. No, I guess not the last section. I, I'm, uh, yeah, well, kind of. The, the last section, um, I got a hundred. I don't know what I have left. Oh, I don't have that much. Well, no. What do I have? I don't know. I don't have the, not the last section, but it's a good, I, I'm pretty far. I, uh, let's see here. It looks like I have about 80 pages left of this. I think I have, um, a little bit over, I think like a little bit, like an almost not less than two hours left on the audio, uh, maybe three hours on the audio. And then I, you know, because I listen to it faster, it's less than that. Anyway, point is I hope to finish this on Monday at work after I've read my, <laughs> my, uh, um, chapters for the secret life of a vampire. So anyway, this is a mystery. Of course, this is one a lot of people have, um, enjoyed that I've heard about. It's, uh, Mary Russell and Sherlock Holmes. And this is the first book. So this is very much a coming of age beginning to the series where it shows a lot of her childhood and or part the part of the childhood where she met, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Um, I can't remember are they in Cornwall. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, and uh, um, so we get to know and how how her mind how is same different from Sherlock. And then again, this is kind of episodic. This first book, I don't know if all the books are like this. If you guys have read this series, you have to let me know because I don't know if I want to continue. I mean, again, I'll see how I feel at the end of the book. But it's so episodic because there's so this one has because it's over a long period of time. Um, there are definitely different stories at different times. So I'm not sure about this one. Um, I really enjoyed the last section, the last two sections was really actually a, a lot better than I thought they were going to be. And again, I like the way she writes, um, did I say it was Lori R. King? Um, I like the way she does write Mary Russell and Sherlock Holmes. Like it, they, it definitely makes him realistic and fallible and it, but it also has all the stuff from, you know, the Sherlock Holmes books. And, uh, there is a lot in here that's been really good and surprising so I do like it. It's definitely a book that I see why people like it. Again, it just, I have this problem with the whole being episodic. I'm not sure I really, if the, all the books are like that. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy that. So you have to let me know. Um, and again, if she does a lot of the things of, you know, 
you know, if we had known this, you know, blah, 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 you know, I might, this might not be a series for me. Cause again, these are written in retrospect and, um, it's interesting. So I, I, I did, I am enjoying this more than I was. I would definitely say at the page 90 mark, I was ready to DNF it and just <laughs> let it go. But, um, now that I've gotten farther into it and, um, I really enjoyed it on Monday when our, sorry, on Friday when I was listening to it, it just, it got really interesting and I really was surprised at the way it went and um, the mystery involved in here where we're not really sure what's going on. I really, I, I did enjoy it. I, I am enjoying it. So anyway, this is a mystery series. I'm not sure I want to continue. You guys have to let me know if all the books are like this that are broken up into episodes. Just not sure about that. But anyway, so I did, um, I am working on that. I did also start The Appeal by Janice Hadlett. So again, this is another March Mystery Madness book. Um, that one I had started ahead of time, but I wanted to get it done. So that's why that's back on this. This is one I've, I've owned since last year, I think. I bought it at Barnes & Noble one, one month. And um, this is one I've always heard about. And this is the mixed media one where there's emails and brochures and things like that. So um, and I think there's going to be interviews, but I'm not positive. Mostly emails. I think it's mostly emails and, and stuff. So I thought that this would read faster than it does. I'm only 60 pages in. I read that night. Um, so this is following a group of people who are living in this town where they um, have a theater group and what the director and his wife, um, who's usually the, the main actress, act, actress in the, in the plays, their granddaughter is diagnosed with a uh, really rare cancer. And then there's all this fundraising going on and people giving money. And then there's this, there's this weird undercurrent of people, their past stuff that's kind of going, filtering in on something that happened in their past. And they're also kind of pushing, you know, pushing for more information on certain things. And it's really interesting so far. So I haven't got to, um, you know, like I said, I'm only 60 pages in, so I'm, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty early days, but, um, I'm in, interested to see what, how this goes. I don't love it. Um, I was really thinking it was going to read faster than it did, but again, I didn't pick it up yesterday because of a choice I made of what book I was reading, but I do, I will come back to this or, you know, I'll probably try to read some of it today or, um, this week, um, maybe after I finish, um, some other things, but, um, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about this one, so we'll see, but this is, was on my TBR as well, um, was on my TBR for March Mystery Madness, because I wanted to get, try to get to it and see how it goes, so we'll, we'll see what happens on that one, and then I, <laughs> I've been reading a lot on my Kindle, especially yesterday, um, I did not, I did, so what I did is I started the Brontes, um, Wild Genius on the Moors, the Story of a Literary Family by Juliet Barker, so again, I bought this a couple of years ago on my birthday, I think. And it's just, it's gigantic. It's like 979 pages of the main text. And it's all about the Brontes. So um, I started this on the 1st for, for March of the Mammoths. This is my, the mammoth that I decided to start with. Because um, I have been dying to read this. And I just thought I would just, I, I just need to start it. I know I have Red Comet and, you know, uh, you know, a couple other ones that I, I want to get to, but this is the one that I wanted to start. And I don't expect to finish this this month, but we'll see how it goes. It matters how I read. It reads, it's really, it's, it's a long read um, because, um, I mean, again, it's dense. There's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot in here. So again, I've only read 100 and, 102 pages. Took me hours to read that over uh, Friday and Saturday. And um, I did only read about 25 pages in here, and then I had to buy the ebook. So I bought this physical thing, and oh, I'll read the physical. It is too heavy for me. It is just, it's, I mean, it's beautifully floppy. Don't, it, I mean, it's gorgeous. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. But I don't want to sit at it at, at my desk and read this. So um, I bought, I got, I did pay a lot for the audiobook, or not the audiobook, the ebook. There is no audiobook. If there's an audiobook, I would be happy, but there's not um, that I could find. But the ebook I decided was, it was much easier for me to read out of that. And it's a pretty, it's, uh, it, it doesn't look like it's, uh, like some of them have formatted weird and stuff. It, it comes off pretty well. So I'm really glad. So this again is the, the whole history of the Brontes. It starts mostly with, um, Patrick, the father, 
and then him. So the 100 pages I've read so far is pretty much all about him and his work um, with him coming over from Ireland and then him being in college at um, uh, around Cambridge and then uh, at is it St. John's, I think. And then uh, him becoming a, 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 a you know, a, a, a curate and a vicar and a, you know, the past, you know, the whatever. Anyway, the point is, this is all, it's all really religious in this first part, um, explaining the time period of what was going on and how he was really, he knew people who were in different movements and stuff. It was, it's, it was very interesting. It's just, it wasn't what I expected. <laughs> Although I should have that I would, that they would start with, with him and then, um, then him, um, meeting, um, Mariah, um, and then them getting together. So that's as far as I've gotten. Um, all the kids have been born <laughs> at this point. So, uh, and then they just moved to where he'll be stationed for the rest of, um, I think they're for all their lives kind of thing. So anyway, it's been fairly interesting. Um, again, I didn't know, I don't know a lot about the Brontes except for the books that I've read. So anyway, we're working on that. So I, that's where I'm at. Um, reading, I did, as I said, I, I started... I started a few or continued a few so we'll go on to that the only book I think I'm going to pick up um also this week I'm waiting I'm going to wait till after I'm finished with the audiobook for well for the beekeeper's apprentice and then um probably when I, I'll wait till either after that one's done or um the secret life of a vampire I haven't decided when I'll pick this up but I'm hoping this week to pick up my other mammoth which is the way of kings again I have started it I'm 400 pages out of um 1100 so I have 700 pages left I don't care it's a mammoth I'm just trying to get through it I want to get through this book so bad and I just keep putting it down so I'm hoping I'll feel like in a fantasy mood to pick this up and finish off at least this book <laughs> this week and then maybe get a start on this second one um with the last 500 pages but we'll see because I've yes you know, I have 200 pages left and this mine is the split versions that came from the UK which I really adore but man, I need to finish that. So anyway, that is it. I tried to go as fast as I could, but I always talk and I had a lot of stuff to, uh, talk about. I did read a lot this week. Um, a lot of it by audio cause it's just the way the wait week worked. I'm literally doing that thing where I'm just all over the place. I'm still reading a lot physically, but I'm also picking up a lot audio. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, we'll see. And then again, now I have a big, uh, the ebook. Um, I wasn't planning to read, uh, the Brontes on ebook, but I had to buy that because my hand was get my wrist was starting to really hurt um, trying to read that. And I think that was the best purchase <laughs> I've made in a while. So anyway, I think that's everything. Cooper is looking super cute. And um, after he calmed down. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let me know what you guys are reading. Are you taking part in, um, as I said, March Mystery Madness um, is, you know, again, going on all March. I know a lot of people are taking part in that. Ma March of the Mammoths um, is also happening. And again, I'm participating in both as much as I can. I figure I'll be hardcore for a couple weeks and then I will start going <laughs> into other things. I usually don't last the whole month on March Mystery Madness just because I don't read strict mysteries all the time. A lot of my books have mysteries in them, but I don't read strict mysteries that often. So, um, anymore. So, We'll see how much I get done. As I said, I'm hoping to get a few more uh, done other than the two that I've already started. Um, I'm hoping to get at least a couple more in the next week. So well, I don't know what I'm going to pick up, though, after I get through those. So we'll see what happens. Um, that's it. Um, I think only I think I'll have my book haul up later this week uh, for uh, February. Of course, I bought more books than I planned, but oh, well. So anyway, I think that's it. So I will... And Cooper, we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.